Hello and welcome. Uh, in this talk, I would like to talk about how we make MMOs from a multiplayer standpoint. Uh, I'll be talking about what the problem is, how we put that into a distributed system, how we can do open world in that system, what mesh topologies are advantageous, how we can do update loops, and some final thoughts about this problem. So let's say you want to make a game. It's a fantasy MMO game, you have a single open world, you just want everyone to play together, you don't want shards, you don't want any restrictions on who can play with who, uh, you want it to be real time, you want AOE effects that hit many people, you want NPCs, and all that kind of jazz. So the first thing you would do is you would say, well, we need a server to client model, this is what all MMOs use, and it's, it's great. The problem is you as the developer has to actually provide that server um, and so there's some things you want to think about when you when you do that uh, you want to think about if your server is compute bound if your bandwidth limited and you want to think about the latency because the latency is 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 the same as lag right so let me introduce a different problem and then we can go through how we can turn that problem into something we can work with so let's say you you make a game you have 100 players in it it works great uh, you just check all players if they're hit by this aoe spell when when they get hit right well that's that's not great uh, if you do that with a thousand or ten thousand or million players then you're gonna have a pretty bad time everything is gonna be laggy and so the solution to this is you split up your world into a grid and uh in this example, you just only check other players that are inside the render distance of the same player. That way, uh, you don't check the entire world. You just check in a in a local environment. This means, you know, splitting up your world into a grid, and then you have some sort of spatial locality where some players only need to know about other players that are inside, uh, inside their render distance. Uh, and what I mean by that is, if you have a, a, a grid like this, if you have a player in this light up uh, red tile here, they actually only need to know about all the players in these other red tiles. They don't need to know about the players in the, in the gray tiles. There's no reason for, for them to know that. Okay. So we kind of talked about that system. Let's talk about, this, uh, about distributed systems, right? You, you kind of need them because no single computer can handle a million players you just don't want that it's gonna be crazy expensive and it might not even be possible so you split your game world up let's say you split it into instances um, if you're lucky you can do that in the case of of uh, of this uh, map here this map and this map are just completely different instances. You cannot travel to one or the other without going through a loading screen. And so they are allowed to be different instances. And, and that's great. You can just transfer the player from one server to the other when you load. Um, so what can we instance? Uh, such like battlegrounds and dungeons and you know worlds. Uh, and we can also do shards, which is different. the same world laid on top of each other. So not everyone can see each other. Um, I'll kind of get into that uh, later. So, uh, when we do this, we don't have an open world, right? So, so that's a little bit of a problem. So let's see what happens if we just split again. Well, that's not great because what happens when you go from this red server to this uh, to this um, orange server down here? Are you gonna hit a loading screen? Like, how are we gonna handle this? That's that's the next question. So remember, we had this, this is all these tiles. We split our world into tiles, and players only need to know about some tiles. Well, if you if you split your world into tiles, we can kind of use that in in this server architecture. So let's have a view at this again, and then let's ask the question for this blue one. What tiles does this blue server need to know before it can compute what needs to happen? It actually only needs to know about these tiles, all its own tiles, and then the surrounding tiles uh, from the other servers. So this implies 
also a little bit that we have to have some mesh topologies that can make it efficient for the servers to talk together. So, before we get into all the mesh topology stuff, let's talk about some things. The first thing I want to say is you want to have your system very distributable. You want to be able to strip it, distribute it as much as possible so you have many cheap devices instead of a few uh, expensive ones. Um, you also need redundancy because failures will happen. You want to optimize for latency and not bandwidth because latency is more difficult to optimize later while bandwidth is just adding more wires to some limit. So I could say you don't want any of this. Maybe you do. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this later but this classic way of thinking about topologies it's not that great. What you really want is you want something that has great locality. And so let me present you with this idea. Uh, you have a single server here and it is responsible for the communication in and out of your server room. And then you have a bunch of small servers and this distributes the work between them. Each of these servers corresponds to a physical location or physical uh, area of the map in your world and they are all connected together so that they are connected locally to all the others but then they can also talk with the other servers uh, through this uh, main server here uh, but you rarely want to do that they, you should set up your mesh topology so they only need to talk locally with this topology you get great locality your latency is low Bandwidth is expandable and it's very scalable because what happens if you want to add a row more computers, right? Well, you just add a row more and you connect them. You don't get any extra latency. Uh, you don't get any deeper hierarchical tree. It's, it's pretty much a constant overhead of adding more servers. So since we've done that, let's let's go through with the thought process of, of thinking about this topology and how we would update a server like this. Um, so when we update the server, we want to read from some previous state and we write to a new state. Um, and these are two different states and then we swap them when we're done. Uh, so in a system like this, all you need to know about, right, the, the, the green uh, server here, which is uh, this box here, those are all the tiles for a single server. It needs to know about all its own tiles and it needs to know about all the surrounding tiles, so all the blue tiles and all the green tiles to be able to communicate together. Um, so, we, I will color code these things now. So, an entire node turns green when it's ready to begin the next tick, which means it's ready to compute the next state. Orange means it's not updated, so it's just been swapped and it needs to go to the next state. Gray means it updated. Blue means that the tile has been propagated to the near neighboring servers. Um, and so you would expect something like this to happen, where we slowly step forward and the servers update and propagate their knowledge to the next one. And then when they're all done, you go to the next state. A problem with this is what happens when one server gets really slow and the other one gets really fast, right? The other one, it just, it keeps waiting for this, this yellow server up here keeps waiting for this orange server down here because it just is not done with computing. So in a system like this, slowdowns can propagate, which is bad. Uh, a simple solution here is just to skip that server and then just use the value from the previous uh, state. That's an okay way to do it, but you don't really know what's happening at that point. You have a difficult time ensuring correctness and such. And we are gonna talk about how we might be able to solve this with a different topology a little later. Okay, 
So we look, we have looked at this topology. There's excellent locality. Your wires are short. Com your communication happens locally. It's many cheap components, few expensive. And interesting observation here, your physical nodes correspond to a virtual space. This is both a curse and a blessing. Uh, shortcomings of this is what happens when you have a lot of players in a small area. You're gonna have a bad time because because your uh, your physical node corresponds to virtual space, many players in a small area will mean that you just have many players in a single uh, node and that's that that's a little bad. Uh, also lag can propagate in this structure. Um, a grid structure kind of locks you in a grid, so that's a little sad. Um, and we haven't talked about failures yet. So, alternative topology. Let us think about having all the benefits from the last topology, but now let's make everything dynamic. So all the servers have a list of all the other servers, what tiles they own. Um, and then uh, they just, you have your main server, as shown before, distribute all those tile, and that means if some servers have a slowdown, it will give away some of its tile to its neighboring servers. Um, interestingly enough, if you do this, you know, you might have something like this, where the red area here, there's many players, so it gives away some of its tiles to the blue and the yellow one, and the same for the green one and so forth. Um, interesting enough when you do this is that you want to minimize the surface of, uh, of, of these area of, of um, uh, between the servers here, between the tiles, sorry. Uh, so you can turn this into an optimization problem and then it gets really easy to, to make a program that can do that for you. Uh, but one observation I'm gonna, I want to, I, or one thing I want to get across here is you want to keep locality. You don't want to swap the, the blue and the green ones. You always want the green ones to be physically about the same place in your server structure as you want them to be in the world. Um, and also you don't want to swap all the time. You, you want to keep swapping the tiles around to a minimum. So you don't, it, you, you have a cost when you swap uh, tiles. So um, let's think a little bit about this thing. So maybe we don't really need that structure that we talked about before. Maybe we could do something different. That's not an easy question to answer. What is the best thing? It depends on what your expected player base is. It, it depends on how many people you expect in the same area? Are you going to have them very distributed? Are they all going to be in few uh, small spaces? How much is going to be instanced? So yeah, it's just you want to think about locality and you want to think about latency when you set up your uh, mesh topology. And then a comment on failure here is um, when you have this dynamic uh, assignment, if one of the servers fail, you can just assign all of the tiles to a different server. And so you've kind of solved that problem automatically. Um, although you will have a worse, uh, you will have some, some, some worse uh, bandwidth problems and latency problems when you do that, but then the server gets replaced and then you're back to normal operation. There's a bunch of things we didn't talk about because I'm reaching the slides here and we didn't talk about inventory or player stats, or friend list or chatting or all these kind of things. So I gotta have a second talk about this, which where I'm gonna talk about cross reaching and managing uh, players and shouting. Uh, and that's gonna be a part two. So I hope I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.